Hi, my name is Kaylee. Welcome to a short and sweet hip opening practice. When you are ready, you can meet me in a seated position. Let's start with the left leg crossed in front of the right. Bring your hands to your knees and just join me in a couple kind of rib circles over the pelvis here. Start to move around in the sides of your lower back. I'm finding a little bit of that hip hinge here. Switch the direction of those circles that you're making. At any point during this practice, you can close your eyes down. These shorter stretch uh, practices, adding them to your routine is really awesome, but we wanna make sure you get the most out of your time. So try and drop right in. A tool that works for a lot of people to do that is closing the eyes down or softening them. And even though I just mentioned that, you'll probably wanna blink them open for our next part for our little instruction here. All right, so left legs forward. You're gonna extend your left leg. Sole of the right foot comes inside of the left thigh. Let the right knee stay heavy. Square your chest toward your left leg. Stretch your arms up, lengthen out the spine, and then fold forward over that extended left leg. It is totally fine. Milo's obstructing the view here, but it's totally fine to have a bend in that left knee. And take five deep breaths. You'll see if you can relax through the neck. Maybe part the lips, make sure the jaw is soft. You might bow the chin toward the chest, breathe into the back of the shoulders, just using the breath to create a little bit of space behind the heart. One more cycle of breath here. Stay for the exhale. Maybe you drop even deeper into that stretch for that final exhale. You walk the hands back in, pressing down to lift the chest up. All right, stretch that right leg out. So both legs are stretching out. You're gonna go for as wide of a stretch as you comfortably can. So it doesn't need to be painful in the inner thighs, but find an end range of motion. Something that can be helpful is to lift the hips a bit and send your tailbone back behind you. So I always like to kind of readjust and I find I have more space that way. Flex the feet, so toes point straight up, knees are pointing straight up, they can be bent. But start to walk the hands forward, coming down as far as you comfortably can again. So that's the key with all of these stretches. In order to prevent the nervous system from going into that fight or flight kind of stress mode, which is going to create more muscular tension, which is the opposite of what we want, we can't do anything too intense. So if we come into these stretches, like very aggressively, uh, aiming for 110%, so to speak, the body is gonna resist. So you wanna find maybe a 70% effort and then see if you can kind of soften around that. It's gonna take time. So we'll hold for another 90 seconds or so in this straddle. Those patterns of tension have taken a long time to build up in the body. And so expecting them to untangle themselves immediately is a little bit um, unrealistic. If you feel safe here, you can relax the feet. If the knees feel safe, relax through the feet. You might choose to drop the chin toward the chest, maybe even give your head a couple very gentle nods side to side, releasing any tension at the base of the skull. Notice as you relax through that axial occipital joint at the back of the skull, if the hips relax a bit. Take one more deep breath here. And start to walk the hands back inward, lifting the chest up, easy does it. And then catch behind the knees one at a time to bring the knees back in and then bring the knees together. Bring your hands back behind you. 
tiny little movement through the knees, or you can pause and find some stillness just for a breath, maybe straightening the legs. Notice the bounce back sensation in your body, those stretches. And then when you're ready, we're gonna cross the legs, but this time the right ankle is gonna be in front. Settle in here. Bring your hands to your knees again, and then nod the chin up and down. Soft eyes, whether they're open or closed, can you relax the little muscles around the eyes? Taking a nice exaggerated nod of the head. So as much as we are working the hips, there's a connection between the neck and the shoulders and tension in that part of the body, as well as the hips and the pelvis. So sometimes if you can ungrip, unwind tension in the neck and the jaw and the shoulders, sends that signal through the body that it's okay to relax, that it's safe. Bring your head through the center, nod your right ear toward your right shoulder, and then your left ear toward your left shoulder just a couple times. Nice and easy, let the shoulders move along with the head and the neck, breathing. Come back through the center and we're gonna set up for half butterfly on the other side. So this time that right leg comes out. Left foot is somewhere on the inside of the right leg. Flex the right foot to start, reach your arms up, let the ribs drift away from the pelvis and rotate the sternum toward your right knee and then fold forward, coming to that natural stopping point. And so you wanna find a soft edge in the body, You're not pulling, not forcing, but definitely feeling some sensation. And then hold, let time do its magic. Let time do the work for you. And your job is to create as much ease as possible. So that might mean, for me, sometimes that means bowing my head or even sliding. I happen to have a block nearby, sliding something right underneath the forehead. Give yourself two more cycles of breath. Moving toward the resistance in your body gently. And then starting to lift the head, walk the hands back in to lift yourself up. Bring your hands back behind you so that you can stretch the legs just for a moment out in front of you, releasing the knees or the left knee in particular. Might feel good to wiggle the feet or to paddle the knees. And then we're gonna take butterfly pose, bring the soles of the feet together. Hands come to the ankles or to the feet. Lift the chest through the arms. So flat back, maybe even finding almost like a cow stretch, that spinal extension, tipping the chin up if that feels good. We won't hold in this position for long. Then allow yourself to melt forward. My favorite thing to do in butterfly pose is to give my feet a little massage. You might use the thumbs on the inseams of your feet. If that's too weird for you, that's fine. Just notice if you've got any kind of little tender areas in the ankles or the calves. If you've never given your own feet a massage or your own like body a massage in a way that um, isn't like, oh my God, my shoulder hurts, <laughs> go slower than you think you need to. I see people thinking that they're like helping and massaging, but they're kind of um, like picking at the tension. 
So if we wanna relax muscular tension or even relax just generally, it's gonna be a slower pace than we have habituated for ourselves. Just checking in with the stretch sensation. Maybe you can deepen a little bit. That edge, that end range of motion can change over time. Then it can change in both directions, right? If we hold a stretch for a really long time, at some point, the body will have a reflex that mm, moves us away from the depth of that stretch. It's kind of like a bell shaped curve, right? So at the beginning of the stretch, there's a lot of resistance. That resistance starts to melt. We can go deeper into the pose. And then after a certain amount of time, different for everyone, it starts to become, um, we get like diminishing returns on those investments and our body's telling us to back up and out. So let's hang out here for another minute and just be really curious about the signals that you're getting from your body. Can you mentally reassure yourself in a way that feels supportive? And trust that any signals that you get from your body are intelligent and actionable. So what I mean by that is if the body invites you deeper, explore that invitation. And if the body tells you to back off, honor that. And two more breaths, maybe bringing the breath a little bit lower into your lungs or your belly or your lower back. And start to lift yourself up, bringing the hands in, guide the knees together, and then extend the legs out again. Take a breath or two here. Letting the hips and the knees relax, feeling the rebound sensation in the knees and the inner thighs. And then go ahead and work your way uh, onto your back. Let's take a supine half pigeon pose and a spinal twist. So roll out onto your spine, let the shoulders release underneath you. Bend your knees and then bring your right foot on top of the left thigh for a figure four. Let that right knee drift away from your body. It's a great place to stay if you're feeling some sensation. If you want or need a little bit more, you can bring your left thigh in and interlace your fingers behind the left thigh or around the left shin. As you pull the left leg in, if you're choosing to add that element, Continue to just gently let the right knee drift away from your body. There's something called a three-part breath where we move the inhale into the torso, into the cylinder of the torso in three smooth parts. So we'll try that together here. Exhale the breath completely. Then inhale into the belly, into the sides of the ribs, and into the center of the chest. And exhale the center of the chest, the ribs, and the belly last. Do that again. Inhale, let the belly fill, let the ribs lift, let the center of the chest open. Exhale back down, center of the chest, ribs and belly. One more, breathe into the belly, the chest, maybe the shoulders or the collarbones. And then exhale from the top down, the collarbones, the ribs, the belly. All right, keep your legs, tee out the arms, Bring your arms down to the sides of your body, getting bull post shape or a T. And then if that left leg was lifted, bring that left foot back down. We're just gonna drop the right foot to the left. 
So right knee is pointing upward. You can reach down with your left hand and catch that right ankle. Your nose might point straight up. If it feels good in the head, you can nod your chin toward your right shoulder. If that three-part breath felt supportive for you, you can move back into that rhythm. You saying in your own mind, inhale belly, chest, collarbones, exhale collarbones, chest, belly. You moved your head to the side, bring your chin back to the center, take a breath. And then untangle everything as you exhale. Step the feet a little bit wider than hips distance, keep the knees bent, drop the knees in so the knees can rest against each other. And then just take one or two breaths here. Let those stretches and twists settle in. And then walk the feet back to hips distance. Figure four on the left, sliding your left foot over the top of the right thigh. Right foot can stay planted on the ground, letting that left knee drift away from your body. Or you can catch hold of the back of the right thigh or the front of the right shin. If you go to catch hold of the right leg somewhere and you notice your head and neck and shoulders getting real tight, see if you can relax the head and the neck and the shoulders first. And if you can, great, you can stay there. If it feels like you're straining to be in the stretch, remember we're gonna be sending that signal through the body to add more tension through that strain. So you wanna find that sweet spot where we're not pushing or pulling so hard that the body has to resist. But we have moved to some point in a range of motion where we feel some sensation of stretch. If you caught hold of the right leg somewhere, Go ahead and slowly lower your right foot back down. Arms come to a cactus or a T. And then let the left foot drift down to the right. Left knee is still pointing upward as much as you comfortably can. You might choose to reach down with your right hand to catch the left ankle. And then maybe the chin nods over toward your left shoulder. See how far down into your spine you can send your breath. Bring the head through neutral, take an inhale. Exhale as you untangle and gradually find Shavasana, so maybe one leg at a time, stretching the legs out long away from your lower back. Let the feet just naturally flop open, so no resistance there. Feel all of that rebound sensation, so just notice the effect on the muscles in your legs, the joints in your legs. You've stimulated a lot of blood flow down into those lower limbs and hips. And allow yourself to be here just for 30 seconds, letting the entire body melt into the surface beneath you.
When you're ready to move on with your day, you can nod your head gently side to side, maybe rotate the ankles, the wrists, wiggle the fingers, the toes, stretch the arms back up over your head, and eventually transition up to a seat. You can blink your eyes open when you're ready. Thank you for joining me to move around in your body a little bit to send the joints and the muscles and the connective tissue a little extra care and attention. I hope the practice served you well. Let me know how you're feeling um, and then keep up a stretching routine. I hope to see you soon. Take care.